saw. So good morning to everybody. I just missed you so much, family. I can't even tell you to be part of this family, to see your faces, to feel like I was just running home and I'm just so excited to see you. We've had some great speakers in here um, doing exactly part of the plan that talking about prayer and then talking about what Jennifer spoke of yesterday, uh, last week. How many of you enjoyed Sean's and Jennifer's words in your heart? It's important that we see God through um, many lenses. Everyone has a piece of um, everyone has a piece of what you need within this church. There's a way that Nettie sees God that you need to hear. There's a way that Phil sees God that you need to hear. Men, how did you much, did you enjoy Phil yesterday? If you didn't, yeah, if you didn't make it to the men's meeting, you're going to want to be there on, um, what's the next date, Howard? Do you know off the top of your head? We'll let you know. Yeah. Whether we're in a series or not, every men's meeting is made to be freestanding so you can come and go as you want. And I just, I want to see some of these younger guys there. I want to see some of these younger guys there because it's time for you guys to rise up. It's really going to be fun. Okay, so I'm happy to be with you again. I love you. I love worshiping um, with you. I love worshiping our Lord. And um, together this morning, I'd like us to, um, well, let's just recognize it's Palm Sunday Day. We've got these lovely little things. I'm from Florida, so I find these kind of... I... (laughs) my Florida buddy right here. And, and it's interesting that he said that because I'm not going to, I'm going to talk about Palm Sunday, but not a lot. Uh, I'm going to talk about real hope, not fake hope, because I love what they did. They did this, man. They, they, Jesus came in and it says they took the palm from Ron's off the tree. Palms like they have in Florida. They have in Israel. How many have been to Israel? We got to do a trip to Israel. Yeah, it's great. And they really had, now I'm not saying that they were any worse than us. They had hopes and they thought that this triumphant Messiah was coming in to save them, to save them. Almost like if you had a bunch of lame presidents and then some strong guy came in and then let you down. Because they they were looking for a military leader, not not someone to go after their hearts. But I, I it's funny because to me, Palm Sunday really is a picture of our best that we can do in our own flesh. It really is. It's, it's our best. It's our, it's our religion. It's, it's our, take my everything, my little palm frond. And I think God will do something with that. But what always gets me is they crucified him just a few days later. You are the guy. No, you're not. So, I, I think it's important that we think about Palm Sunday as being a wonderful, but it's, it's really just what we can do. But what really makes the difference is what God can do, what God can do in us. And so um, my message this morning I want to share with you, I believe, is what the Lord wants you to receive in this season. And I, I'm asking you to do with open hearts. I was asked to preach this at another church in town, and they, it, it, they were shouting. It was, it was quite a good uh, weren't they, Ben? <laughs> ben was there. Because this is what I believe the Lord is saying to us. And I was honored when they said, come share that. And I think that I may have to share it some other places because we are not just about El Dorado. We are about El Dorado first. But we are here, let me just say it like this. God wants his city back. God wants his city back. God wants the city of holy faith to look like holy faith. God wants New Mexico back, and God wants your heart back. He gave it to you, and he wants it back. He wants you to give it back to him. And so this morning, I want to share what I believe is um, for this season. And it's a great season, a season of transition. Whether we, we, you would agree if you've looked at the stock market. It's up, it's down, it's not. And there's nothing wrong with transition because we're in this together. And I see it as a very great season. I hope you will by the time we're at the end of this. But I want to talk to you this morning about the hope that is coming. I want to talk to you this morning about the hope that is coming. The hope that is coming. Father God, thank you for what you did in my heart this week. 
they're looking at me saying, I don't recognize him, maybe. Um, good. I pray that you'll be heard, and only you, in Jesus' name. It's another better day than Palm Sunday, this week before Easter, for us to talk about the resurrection of Jesus, the hope of Jesus. Palm Sunday depicts the expectant hope, the arrival of the Messiah, the king is coming, the hope of our salvation. And it depicts the rushing in of the most valiant hero that has ever been, that has always been. And that is God himself. And there's nothing we need more than God himself to rush in. And I love the fact that Palm Sunday happens the original one, and they didn't call it Palm Sunday. They were just saying, Hosanna in the highest. You are the greatest. You're here. He's finally here. He's finally, every dream I ever had is going to come true. Not exactly. Sometimes God gives us something, but it isn't what we thought it was supposed to look like. But I like that they took their garments off, and they took their palm fronds, and they laid them down, because that's the only way we get to him, is to lay ourselves down before him not religion, ourselves. We say all the time, this isn't about religion, this is about relationship. But it's not about a relationship where like we get something, we, now that I'm married, I can just relax now. Howard, don't laugh. He's cracking up over there. My friend, when he got married, his pastor told him, you're a good worker. I, I've, I've, he owns three restaurants. He said, you're a good worker, he told my friend who owns the restaurant. He said, you just got another job. That doesn't mean, okay, you're not shocked that I just called marriage a job. What I'm saying is that we make a decision and then we maintain it for the rest of our lives. But it doesn't change. So you can't say, I told you I loved you when we got married. It, it still holds true. I don't have to tell you ever again, do I? There's this thing that I, right? There's this thing that I have been awakened to again and again, and I keep forgetting, and I keep, and that is that we don't come to the Lord, get his stuff, his grace, his righteousness, and then thank you, God, put it in our backpack, and then go live. The picture, <laughs> the world likes to say things like, oh, it's a crutch. No, no, life support. I used to say a wheelchair. No, it is life support. The Lord is, says, abide in the vine. If you do not abide in me, you have nothing in me. It's like trying to separate from the Father. It's like you have to eat every day. Why would you need to bring your bloody, broken self back to the Lord every day, right? And so the message today, I believe, is awesome because the word of God is, is gonna point to this, but there's never been a time when the faithful needed a visitation from God, God's people in Israel, than this time. The Romans had come in, and Romans were not nice. They had come in, and in those days and times leading up to this moment, Jesus rode in on that donkey, but before that, hope had already been rising in the land. Hope had already been stirring in the land, you see, because the politics of the time had let them down. Politics ever let you down, Santa Fe. The religious forms, the lifeless rituals, the rosaries had let them down. The integrity of the nation, I don't know what's going on here, there it is. The integrity of their nation had been subverted it had been overrun. The whole kingdom of Israel had become poisoned with foreign ideologies and the corruption that was within their country made a mockery of the religion that was at the heart of their country. I don't know if you can relate to any of this. And it was in this place, right there in that place, that Jesus arrived on the scene. Still many missed the hope that had come right before their eyes. They missed it because he didn't look like what they wanted. They wanted Schwarzkopf, they wanted Patton, they wanted Conan the Barbarian, 
and they got Jesus on a donkey. In 1 Kings 18, there's a story about the prophet Elijah in the Bible, and it records how he believed for the abundance of rain. And maybe you know that. It records how he believed for the abundance of rain where the skies were as clear as they could be. And in 1 Kings 18, if you're looking, it's around chapter, I'm at verse 44, but here's, here's what he says. It won't be on the screen. I'm gonna paraphrase it a little for you. Here's the exact quote. The prophet says, Elijah, the Bible says, but Elijah the prophet climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees and prayed. I always read that quickly because if I say put his face between his knees, you think it could be pretty and then kissed himself goodbye. No, he prayed. He prayed. Even against the blue backdrop of the clearest sky, it hadn't rained in three and a half years. And, they, and they're like us, they need rain, okay? And so against the bluest backdrop of the clearest skies, Elijah was so convinced that rains were coming that he went to the king and he told the king, go eat and drink for there is the sound of a heavy rain. For there is a sound of a heavy rain. Like when we walked around here, Jenny Lynn, 17 years ago, I said, I smell revival. I can't see it, can't taste it, but I almost. And so what's so funny is he knew it so uh, in his being, in his bones, that Elijah just went to the king and said, don't worry, go eat, drink, there's a sound of heavy rain. The king said, okay, when it went, went and feasted. Elijah says it, I believe it. So faithfully convinced was Elijah that he told his servant, go, go and look toward the sea. So he went to the cliff and the servant went up there and looked and there was nothing there. Just a blue, calm, empty sky, no rain clouds, no cumulonimbus. And he had the servant go back again and again and again and again, seven times, and there was nothing to see. But Elijah prayed and trusted and prayed, Paula, and trusted and prayed and trusted. And the report came back, behold, I see a little cloud on the horizon. A cloud as small as a man's hand rising up from the sea. I see it. The Bible says in four, verse 45, meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds and the wind rose. A heavy rain started falling on the desert land. See, when God's doing a new thing, church, not everyone can perceive it right away. Have you heard of the revival in the Hebrides? that occurred from 1949 to 1953 in the islands off the northwestern coast of Scotland where two older women, I'm not looking at anybody. I don't have any older women in here. In fact, I was telling someone about you on this trip, about some of you, and I was talking about Jude, and I said, this girl, and they said, did you say she was 80, what? You just called her a girl. I said, I know, am I right? You're, you're a woman too, but we love your girl spirit. And it's not just June, the men in here. We are not old guys. But I love what happened in the revival of the Hebrides where two older women resolved to pray and the land was changed. The church had been dying there and there was nothing to celebrate. There was nothing to celebrate, but that God broke in and moved when two old ladies got to praying. I wanna stop now before I forget. We're here Wednesday nights, aren't we? And we're not in a prayer circle whining. We get on our faces. I'll, be, I'll clarify that in a minute. <laughs> Only whining. <laughs> we get on our faces because we all need to whine. And we praise the Lord and we give our prayers to him and we scribble down all the junk in our heart. We put it in baskets for the first 30, 40 minutes. And then we come together and we are safe to whine and cry and give. And then we pray for one another. But we go to God first and then we call forth his grace down. And so I love that we got to double digits, but it'd be great to see 50 people at a prayer night Wednesday night at 6.30. Not, I understand you're, not, you're busy 
some Wednesday nights, but you're not busy every Wednesday night. And if you get hungry enough, you'll come for food, the holy food. I love what happened though in the Hebrides in those Scottish islands, the power of the Holy Spirit. There was nothing to celebrate, no breakthrough. There was, people were still struggling in their addictions. They were still uh, dry in their religion. Their land was going to pot, drunkards everywhere. There's good scotch in Scotland. There was a lot going on there. People were far from God. And then all of a sudden the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out and a revival flooded the land. Farms and looms across the countryside were silenced. Suddenly and strangely, people considered God again. Like the girl sitting next to me in the plane, young stewardess decided to jump seat or whatever they call it, and she sat next to me on the plane, and I thought, oh man, she's gonna, and she's putting her thing, her screen on, it's gonna distract me, I need to rest. Guess what she was watching? The Chosen. It's everywhere, guys. People are, people are, are, it's where you least expect it. And so what I love about what happened in the Hebrides revival was that for a long time, the skies looked blue and the, they looked clear. And then suddenly they saw a cloud and the rains of revival followed. It's amazing to think about that. Historic moves of God encourage our hearts to hear about this, right? But what about us? What about us here now? Could this be our time? I believe hope is coming and I believe he's doing a new thing in our midst. When God's doing a new thing, not everyone can perceive it immediately. In fact, few can. When God begins to reveal a fresh new expression of his goodness, it may come in a wrapper <laughs> we don't recognize right away. Your family might not recognize what's happening in your home, but something's changing in your marriage. It may look like a fight, but you're coming into authenticity, which will bring back the new wine to you. You don't know what's happening in your home, but something's changing. Sometimes we're so busy looking backwards and rehearsing our sin, thinking about the last season, as Jennifer spoke of last week, you know, COVID knocked the snot out of us. Not, not, not the virus as much as the, uh, I don't know what I'm, everything I was standing on was, has, is an, has crackled beneath my feet and, and now I've got, uh, which president do I have now? I don't even know what we're doing. Like, where are we? Like, that's how we all feel on some level. It may not look like the rapper, Mr. Florida. When we have a hurricane, we've been through a few of those. It looks pretty rough all the dead branches, but then what happens, man? It's like everything grows again, doesn't it? Everything's about to grow again. And so listen, sometimes we're so busy looking back, we miss the sign of the times. I'm looking at the clock. We'll get out on time. There's not a lot here, don't worry. <laughs> he's going slower than he usually goes. I mean, if, he's, if it's as long as it usually is, we are not gonna make it all the disappointments, the anxieties you've endured, the lost relationships, the opportunities that never weigh, came through, they can weigh you down. The, the bl they blind us to what God is doing now. Like Jennifer, you, you didn't even know I was gonna talk about this and you spoke of it. You said it, we, disappointment. I mean, Karina, you know what Karina, I told you, what did I tell you, your little daughter? She says yes. Karina, you want to go to, yes. We don't say yes. We don't wake up every morning and say, yes, God, to whatever you've got for me today. Yes! Because the Bible talks about this, and the old rabbis used to say, first you do, then you understand. It's like giving. Some of you are, are givers. Have you noticed it was like, this doesn't make sense to give my money away. You do, then you understand. He pours out such a blessing. There's, that's why I don't get worry about asking or talking about giving because it's like the sandbox of, of the spiritual life. If you can't trust God with 
stuff that's renewed, how are you going to trust God with the deepest parts of you, forgiveness, and, 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 and what happened to you with your dad, what your dad did to you, how he let you down, what your mom did to you. I know she's in heaven now, but you got some wounds. How are you going to take those wounds to God if you can't trust him with a buck? It's like, just, it's like sandbox training. And the thing is, is, and the thing is, is that God wants us, he wants all of us. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I said let go because I'm realizing more and more, I, I can trust him with even the yuckiest. And not even that it's so vile because we all have depravity within us. The Bible says the heart is sick. Who can understand it? The heart is desperately sick, it says. Who can understand it? Well, that sounds like sin consciousness. No, I, what I mean is I don't have to have it all together and to bring it to him. I can bring him the pieces. As long as I'm willing, he'll sort through them and reorder my life. And so it's interesting here that we are often blinded to what God's doing. And faith, as the Bible describes, is a now thing. Hebrews 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The apostle Paul says, but one thing I do, <laughs> pastor, you got any scripture in this sermon? Yeah, here we go. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I strain forward, I lie, straining forward, just, whoops, straining forward, just so you know, I didn't go on a retreat last week, I did a six day boot camp with 20 pastors. It was called an advance. We didn't sleep much. We just went after God. And then and about day four, they're like, we're just getting started. Come on, guys. It was, I mean, and these are guys that already go hard. Have you ever tried to go hard for God? For real? Not like spectacles. Not, no, not, I'm talking hard for God. Because in life, the only thing that you won't... What happens if I get to the end of, you'll never get to the end of God. You'll never get to the end of his mercy, his grace, his power, his forgiveness for you. He's, there is no such thing as so spiritually minded you're not earthly good. You can get as spiritual as you can possibly get and he'll only give you feet on the ground. He's that kind of God. So here's what he says. Paul says this. He says, there's one thing I do for I, I forget that stuff back there. And I strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ. I forget my sorrows. I forget my setbacks. I forget the past season. And I lean into the now thing. I lean into the now thing that he is doing in my midst. We haven't seen it yet, but we have the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. Uh, we know what is sure to come by faith. The message translation about it says that faith, Greg, is the title deed to what you're believing God for. God gave you a promise, but it's, it seems like it's taking forever. You have the title deed. But faith is not an aspiration. It's not a striving. It's a surrender to trusting him. So did you hear about this? Did you hear about the move of God and the great awakenings where Jonathan Edwards preached the gospel to a dry and dying church? He was famous for having no charisma, speaking in a monotone voice. He read his dense theological notes, but the spirit just fell. People shook and cried under the weight and the majesty of God and the conviction of sin. Well, pastor, maybe you should be monotone. No, because the next awakening, the guy was finny, was wild. God doesn't, he doesn't do it the same way. He doesn't have to do it the same way. When Jesus healed the blind men, look how many different ways he did it. You're looking for a formula, man. And the reason we are looking for a formula Speaking as a formula person, I was raised with formulas and there's nothing wrong with having rituals and formulas that get us in the place, but we want to check the box. Well, I went to Wednesday prayer. <laughs> yeah, did you go to Wednesday prayer? 
Did you go to Wednesday prayer? Did you go to Wednesday prayer? Sorry, John. Did you go to Wednesday prayer in your face? Huh? Did you? I've kneeled before the Lord once, but my knees hurt. Okay, lie down. I don't know what to tell you, but I am telling you that I'm tired of missing out because I'm worried about getting my jacket dirty. I'm not trying to be hard on you. I can't believe you still go to this church because you know, I know how hard I am on myself and I think you can tell too. I promise to be more and more gentle with you, but I also promise to raise the bar like you've never seen because now is the time. Could this be our time of visitation? Not just El Dorado Church, the church. Could this be our time for a great awakening? Could this be the time of your greatest blessing, of your greatest breakthrough, Anne? What about that one, that daughter, that granddaughter, that child, that son, that, that lover, that, 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 that friend, that whatever it is, I'm trying to look for the card. Jenny, you got one of those cards? Here it is. The people you wrote on this card, what if it's their time? Could it be their time? What about you? Look at first, Second Peter. I, 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 I've been praying for that person for 40 years, Lord, but I, I don't know if, eh. here's what it says. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand, slowness. And as you understand slowness, that's not the Lord. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, not wanting anyone to perish. Nettie, is that basket over there? Not wanting anyone to perish. And, I, and I'm just saying that I could go, God, save Gina, save Robert, save Rusty, save, save whoever you're praying for. Thanks, Miss Nettie. And I can do that, and you should do that. But there's a different kind of prayer that I'm entering into now that is save, you do it, under the cross. I give it to God, and I believe I gave it to him. This is what those two little ladies did in the Hebrides. This is what happened to those people. And I ask you again, could this be our time? Because friends, I believe this is the very hour. I believe this is the very hour. Not in the charisma, of, not in the energy of Guy Cantella. I know I have a little. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, is that bacon I smell? Oh, that's not kosher. But I mean, <laughs> is that, what is that? What is that? What is that smell, June? June, what is that? You know, someone who's been through a revival before, through a renewal before. You smell it, don't you? You've been t June's been telling me, Judith, who went to heaven, said it's already here. And I'm like, honey, it ain't here. This is hard soil. Look what God says. Here's our key scripture for today. Isaiah 43. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Now, do you not perceive it? The Lord says, I, he, I, Yahweh, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He says, do you not perceive it, says the Lord? If you're looking back, if you're letting your yesterdays define and set the tone, our hearts won't be ready. Isaiah 43, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Yeah, but pastor, how's it gonna happen in this environment? How's it gonna happen in this economy? How's it gonna happen in this world that's a wasteland? 
How's it gonna happen in this wild, lawless place? How's it gonna happen in this situation with the politics, with the cultural divisions, with these wars, with the wild upside down in morality? How's it gonna happen? Um, God, how's it gonna happen? Well, let's look what he says in his love letter. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh, that's how. Now I do this new thing, don't worry, he says. And this is not a new thing to God. We see that he did this for the Egyptians. I mean, he did this for the Israelites when they were in Egypt once, but that wasn't the only time he did it. He did it again in 539 when they were, they were pulled into exile by the Babylonians. Because God doesn't change. You see, God, the God who's going to do the new thing, he changeth not. He's the same today, forever, yesterday, forever. And yet he's getting ready, our God, to pour out such an awakening. He's getting ready to pour out such an awakening in you, such an awakening in our church, such an awakening in our city, such an awakening of faith and favor on the faithful. Something is happening, and I know some of you can already tell. Some of you can already feel it. Some of you can already see it. Some of you already believe it. The skies may seem blue, and yet there's a cloud coming. There's an outpouring rising up from the sea that's available to those who want it, who want it. You know, um, a pastor said something this week, and I was like, whoa, I thought I was tough. I, I, I preached something where I said, and I looked right at you, and I actually pointed to everybody, including my, and I said, if you're not hot and you're not cold, saith the Lord, I will spit you out of my mouth. And you're supposed to say that thing soft so you, you people don't get upset. I kind of said it loud. This other pastor said, when I read that scripture, I realize the ones that are lukewarm have no hope. There's no hope for you who are lukewarm. There's no hope for you if you're lukewarm. I was like, whoa. Well, where'd you get that from? Because it says God will spit you out of his mouth. Yeah. It's time to be all in. Christ has set us free. The skies may seem blue, yet there's a cloud rising. And it's available to those who want it and to those who believe. Christ has set us free. The Lord had me deep in prayer a few weeks ago for somebody who he showed me was going to come to the altar. I don't know why they were going to come to the altar. I don't know what it was for. I designed the whole sermon for an altar call. And we gave the altar call and seven people came up and that person didn't come up. And I said, God, this whole, and I know it's for everybody, but that was the one. And then she came up. I, I, I acted like I didn't notice. I was crippled. Because I had seen it, then I saw it. And I don't need to know what she professed. But I'm telling you that if we listen to God, if we, because here's the thing. You got your friends in here. You don't want anybody to know you got stuff. You know what stays in, happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas. That's <laughs> how it is in here, guys. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Many of you have heard about these aromas of revival fire, fire sparking. How many of you have heard about that? The Asbury Revival, they're calling it. I think it's the beginning of something. There's actually um, 40 or 50 different college revivals that are happening. We've seen it all over the country. I think it's the start of something. Last m month, the Jesus Revolution movie was released. How many of you have seen it, just for the record? You should see it. It documents the true story of a national spiritual awakening that happened in the 1970s. Larry Eskridge, a leading scholar, he said that that movement sparked at least 250,000 people becoming Christians. The film has grossed $50 million and continues to still draw seekers here and overseas. Now, now here's what I want you to understand. Hollywood didn't expect such a roaring audience response. In fact, 
They expected it to make seven million the first weekend and then just peter off. It actually made 15 million the first weekend, so it doubled it, and then it just kept going. 20 million, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50. It's not about the money, it's about the hunger. Yeah. I mean, you can only get so far going, what's this Jesus movie about? There's, a, there's, a, there's the hand of God reaching into the hearts of people and making them want to come to him. I'm telling you all this because it's time to get over ourselves and our fear of sharing the gospel and believe that God loves them more than we love them and that it's okay if they reject us because we're only here to share what he is saying to them. Come back to the family. Come back to my heart. I want you back. Hollywood didn't expect such a response. Could it be that people are ready, that they're looking, that they're listening for a sound of truth? Could it be that those producers of that movie knew when to release it because they heard the sound of an abundance of rain? They didn't know Asbury Revival was going to break out, but God did. They didn't know The Chosen was going to take the front seat. I, met, I, I just was in a room with the director of that thing. I'm telling you, there's something. What is that? What, is that, is, what is that? Is that an awakening coming to the land? The sky was blue, yet they saw a cloud. So what about us here in Santa Fe? Can you see it? Can you believe it that hope is coming, that God is doing a new thing? I understand it did, what, what, that what didn't work before when you prayed, you asked, you thought, you tried. Yeah, that's okay. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? The skies may look quiet, but faith is beginning to rise and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is doing something. Holy Spirit is doing, he's a person and he's doing something in this room now, right now. And he's doing something in your knowers right now. And he's doing something in the church down the street and at the Light at Mission Viejo where I preached. And he's doing something at the other church that's asked me and the school. He's doing something in our city and it's almost like he told some priest, whoever named it long ago, because I'm sure there was a name over this town with a year, uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years ago, whatever the name was, Uga Booga, somebody called it. I don't know. But somebody came and took a stake and put it in the ground and said, holy faith. This will be a city of set apart faith. This will be a church. El Dorado will be a place of you know, w w does anyone know El Dorado was gold? And rose, yeah. Is there any place that you could ever think of that you've ever read about golden streets? Could this place feel like heaven on earth? Now, I I'm not saying melt all your jewelry down and <laughs> I'm sure Stephen wouldn't mind if you did that on his sidewalk out there. But what I'm asking you is what if the atmosphere in here was golden because we had done something inside. Face beginning to rise. The only way we can recover our joy and our passion is to believe again. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says this. You see, it says, but it's written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love him? Do you love him? It's easy to love him when you realize what he's done for you. Do you love him? Let's get ready because he's pouring out new mercies on us in this church. Even where you sit, the Bible says his mercies are new every day. Every denomination to me is a monument to, the la to some latter move of God where somebody parked the car. Have you parked the car at your last revelation? Ha have you got a, an elder badge or a, a, a usher badge? Or, well, because if you don't have something to talk about that God's done for you in the last three months, two months, yesterday, 
yesterday, five minutes ago. Maybe we're not open enough. In this church, in your prayers, in your giving, in your faithfulness, it all points to what's coming. And a shift is happening. And when that happens, here's what I want to I leave you with here. New possibilities begin to appear. New, new things happen. Anxiety gives way to joy. You know what's interesting, Ben, how different it is in this room. And the reason is this is, our, this is my body. This is my church. You've, you've felt my energy before. I don't want you to act like any other church. I want you to act like you, but I want you to understand, I'm sorry I'm Italian and I'm so, pa- no, and I'm so passionate. I want you to hear me. This is, not, this is not just one of those guy can tell a Saturday night fever dances I'm doing up here. I wish I were very mellow so that you could experience my excitement today. I want to explain to you that I know something's happening. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know that we can help. Not that he needs our help, but he wants us to co-labor with him by leaning back into his arms and trusting him and daring to do things in God we've never done again. But here's what can happen. Anxiety can give way to joy. Hope can rush in, Jocelyn, or someone, I actually want piano, please. He, he says, forget the former things. Behold new ways that God is changing and renewing our lives. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Put that scripture up there because uh, why would God put this in the Bible? I don't have time to teach it, but there's two words for word, there's a couple words for word in the Bible. Logos, logos, and rhema. This is the logos. This is the word given to us. It's a written word and it's always true. It's on the page. But a rhema is a right now word. It's when this word that's already there jumps off the page and it becomes a now word in us. Okay, I want you to, I want to ask you if any of those, any word jumps off the, the screen, the, off of that. When you just, just, as you scan it, what word speaks to your heart? Any, anything? What word, any word jump off of there for you? No, okay. Right on the spot. Like, if he does this to me, I'm going to kill him. You think about it. Amen. Anybody else? Rivers, Jenny says rivers. Tom, he's doing a new thing. Uh, where's my creative? Tandy, what word gets you? Behold. Behold, who said that? Yes, brother. Come up here and pray with me. Let's, will you come up here? I, I know Danny real well. He doesn't mind this, do you, Danny? Will you pray uh, for these people? and for me, that we would behold, that we would see, look, we would look, look up to the hills where our help comes from. God, I pray, I want you here to pray in a minute, that you would give us spiritual eyes, spiritual eyes to see, to see in our wife, in our husband, in our grandkids, in the mountains, in the breeze, in the sun, in the, what you've given us, the gratitude we need to have to see you moving. Give us supernatural sight and supernatural ears to hear you. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard what you're doing in our midst. Get ready, get ready. He's taking us to new levels. Pray, Danny. Father, your, your word tells us that towards the end, there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I just believe that you're fulfilling that promise. Father, we are thankful for the step-by-step things that bring us along, that bring us closer to you. Uh, The little miracles here and the little miracles there, they just all add up and just increase our faith. And Father, I just ask that you continue to increase our faith. And uh, we're looking forward to the blessings, Father. We're looking forward to however it is you're going to use. Amen. What's going to happen? Jenny, come on up. Jenny, before just stay with me. I, I do want to make this last point. 
I know I'm pushing your hearts, but it's God alone who pours out the rain of revival. You can't make God. God alone pours out healing. God alone pours out prosperity. God alone pours out purity. So then what, pastor, what do we do? I wrote this. What is the role in all this? In one word, <laughs> the Latin is obediere. It's actually to listen, to hear. It means obey. To radically obey God. And that looks different for each one of us. But do what he's saying. I spent six mo uh, four months teaching us how to hear the Lord. You can hear the Lord. But can you do what he tells you to do? And so I pray that we would have radical obedience. And I want to just tell you that it's obedience that is the basic ingredient to our overcoming. So before we go into this next thing, close your eyes. Father, what are you speaking to each of us right now? What does radical obedience look like? What does it look like for us to hear you, but to actually do what you say? Father, speak to every heart because I believe your hope is coming. We want to be ready. We want you to be first in our lives. Your hope is coming. What is it, Lord? Make us alert. Make us present. Now is the time of your favor. Now is the day of your salvation. I'm going to read you this last scripture. It's the same one, but it's from the message, and then we're going to, we're going to wrap up the, ser uh, the service. Can you pull up the message? Trans it's not really a translation. It's a paraphrase. Isaiah 43. This is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carved a path through pounding waves. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. He says, forget about what's happening. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present, because I'm about to do something. What's it say there? Brand new. Brand new. It's bursting out. Do you not see it? There it is. There it is. The servant ran back. I saw the, it's the sun. It, and that little cloud, that little cloud, I'm making a road through the desert, saith the Lord, rivers in the badlands, wild animals will say thank you, coyotes and buzzards, because I provided water in the desert, rivers through sun-baked earth, drinking water for those, go ahead, for the people I choose, for the people I choose, the people, this is you, I have made especially for myself, says the Lord, a people custom made to praise me. Praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. As Greg hands out the elements, and we're going to do communion together. We just praise you, God. Thanks for tuning in today. If you are blessed by this message at all, then be a blessing and give to the work of the Lord at eldoradochurch.org.